neck to pelvis, that's your torso. And we have several muscles that we are going to be accountable for in the torso. First of all, let's think about um, our abdominal muscles. These are definitely all uh, fair game, and there are some tricks that I've got for you to know what we're talking about. First of all, your six-pack muscles, those, that's your rectus abdominis. Rectus abdominis is actually covered with a lot of connective tissue, and it, you have a sense of the, the awesome little six-pack of muscle that you can get if you work out your rectus abdominis. You can imagine that it causes you to engage in this flexion motion when it shortens. It's not advised to just do sit-ups that work your rectus abdominis if you're looking at improving your core muscle strength, and that's, you also need to work on the muscles that are um, twisting muscles, and those are your obliques. So take a look at your external obliques. These muscles, I think of them as the fiber direction is this way. I remember my external obliques are, the fibers are moving in the direction of putting my hands in my pockets. External obliques are superficial. So if we are looking, here's my external obliques, and I'm putting my hand in my pocket. If you were to reflect the external obliques, you would see immediately deep to that the internal obliques. The internal obliques have a fiber direction that's perpendicular to the external obliques. I think of it as putting my hands in my back pocket. That's the direction that my external obliques are, my internal obliques are moving. Externals, I'm putting my hands in my front pocket. Externals, I'm trying to put my hands in my back pockets, and they're perpendicular. Then I have transversus abdominis. This is another one that we are required to know. Transversus abdominis has fibers that are traveling um, perpendicular to the standing up human. All three of those, you can imagine the twisting that is going to be facilitated by those muscles all working together. Are you happy with that? Those are your torso muscles. Now, I also have, not there, let's do this first. There are three more torso muscles that are involved in breathing. All the other muscles that you would think of, like pec major, you might think, dude, pec major is on my torso, but pec major is attached to your humerus, therefore it's responsible for moving your arm. And so it, it isn't considered, like the muscles that we're looking at today are purely axial, like they, are, they, they move your torso. So the next set are all involved in breathing. First of all, we have our diaphragm. I don't have a picture of it here, but we're cool with that because we've done diaphragm before because we've already done respiratory system. So diaphragm is, is a muscle that we know that when the diaphragm contracts, it increases the volume of the thoracic cavity decreasing the pressure in there and allowing inhalation. When it relaxes, the volume decreases, pressure increases, exhalation takes place. Our other muscles that are involved are our intercostals, inter between costals, ribs. Our internal intercostals are deep to our external intercostals. However, internal intercostals are found all the way medial, whereas the external intercostals, like, stop. This is the sternum over here. So inter internal intercostals travel between the ribs all the way over near the sternum, whereas the external intercostals have this place where they actually stop. Fiber direction for the external intercostals is the same for external oblique. How awesome is that? Fiber direction for the internal intercostals is the same direction as internal oblique, which makes it super handy. Those are our breathing muscles. And our last muscles that we need to know are back muscles. And we've got one big, long back muscle. That's the erector spiny. Erector spiny is like many of our muscles broken into multiple parts, but we're cool with just knowing erector spiny, and we're cool imagining it as the rope 
of muscles that travel from, that, that are right next to your verte vertebral column. So if anybody wants to uh, palpate some erector spiny, I'm happy to take a nice little erector spiny massage, like knock yourself out. I added this guy to our list because I'm sorry, quadratus lumborum is not easy to get to, to massage or stretch. So, so take a second to visualize this. I'm looking at an anterior view of a skeleton. This is actually rib number 12. Attached to rib number 12 is this quadratus shaped, square shaped, or quadrilateral shaped muscle that also attaches to the iliac spine. So it's actually, quadratus lumborum is considered an abdominal muscle that just went super posterior. It's like the most posterior abdominal muscle or the most deep abdominal muscle, depending on how you want to think about stabbing someone in the abdomen. Don't think about that. That's not nice. It you can actually, if we took out someone's guts, we could see it. You can reach it if you do like a sideway dig in next to where you would think erector spiny are, but it's like deeper than erector spiny and you have to dig in there and it kind of hurts. Sad story, but it's responsible for a great deal of lower back pain in humans. All right. We just did ask axial musculature. We rocked the axial musculature world, and now I'm out of here. I'm out, doggies. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.